Today, I visit an Armenian restaurant that's been around for 38 years. A small mom and pop that's ranked in LA's 101 best, led by their son Armin, whose passion and love for his family saved the business. This is only where to eat. The story of mini kebab begins about 38 years ago. It was started by a Persian Armenian guy. It ultimately means ground meat wrapped in lavash with a mixture of parsley and herbs and sumach. Eventually my dad came into play. He brought his recipes with a different owner. He purchased the business then. It was almost apparent that this was gonna be my future. Down the line, when I became 17, 18, that was the most apparent time for me because we almost lost the business. You know, recession hit. I'm in culinary school, don't know anything about cooking quite enough yet. After school, I'm figuring out ways to help the family business. I'm spamming people on Yelp. If you like Middle Eastern food or Mediterranean food, I think you'd appreciate our food. There's a Korean lady, uh, they used to write for the Korean Times, and she wrote an article, and it kind of blew up and imploded within the Asian community and the Korean community. And from there, hand over fist, we were getting a lot of you know, Asian out. community coming in and then from there transition to me, start becoming this multicultural restaurant as opposed to just being catered to Armenian, Armenian people because that's literally all it was. No social media, no nothing. Took a lot of rain, took a lot of you know sunlight, but eventually you know we're starting to open up and people are coming from all over the world and they appreciate what we have and as a family what we're serving and the inspiration of Mini Kebab's menu is actually derived from not just Armenia but also the Middle East in a sense. So, you know, my family is Armenian. We also are from Egypt. My great grandparents fled to Egypt during the genocide, so there's a lot of influence through Egypt, like our hummus and our falafel. You know, the way we marinate our stuff, the way we, the way we grind our product, the way we tend to the product. This is more than it just being Armenian. It's my dad's handcraft, technique, professionalism, everything coming into play. Once 11 o'clock comes, all hell breaks loose and customers are coming, answering phone calls, on the grill, tending to customers, helping mom, helping pop, and it's just, it's organized chaos at its finest, family business, we're yelling at each other in Armenian, in English, in Russian, God, even in Spanish, I don't even know how my parents do it, but they do it. Seven hours of just pure mayhem, chaos, but um, working alongside my parents is the biggest blessing of my life. This is the time that I have with them and I get to hang out with them and work alongside them, so it's super important. They're so involved and it keeps them alive and it keeps them awake and it keeps them alert. They're able to do everything at that pace still, so you know, it's a double-edged sword for them at the moment, but we'll figure it out. Besides you know, being exhausted and super stressed out and just overwhelmed by the day, um, I do this out of pure love. This is what I believe I'm meant to do for the rest of my life, and I do it every day lovingly and passionately, and I just want to make sure that everybody that comes here feels that passion and love from me and my family. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Only Where to Eat. Here we are featuring another story of passion, food, and culture. If you can subscribe, it really helps out the channel. In fact, 90% of you are not subscribed. So if you can, just drop that button. It helps bring these awesome stories of these restaurants to the masses, and it helps really grow the channel. We really appreciate it, and we can't wait to bring you another episode as soon as we can. Thank you. So I'm here with Chef Armin, who's whipped up this incredible spread for us. We are literally, you probably hear it, we are outside because you guys don't have seating in there. It's nope. just out here. So we're really, really excited. I know I'm really, really excited, and they're going to be really, really excited to try this food. Bro. I'm excited too. Let's do this. All right. First thing is walk us through from like right to left or left to right what we have. All right, uh, let's start with spreads, yeah? Yeah. All right, we got the hummus. It's uh, made fresh every morning. It's uh -huh. my grandma's recipe from Egypt. Okay. I have it with specks of Aleppo pepper, some lemon juice on top, and a little bit of oil. We got the Shirazi salad, AKA Armenian salad. Persian cucumbers, tomatoes, Thai nice. basil, red onions. Nice little red wine vinaigrette. Nice. We have our cucumber yogurt, AKA the uh, 
tzatziki aka masto <laughs> uh it's just fresh dill cucumbers yogurt lepni we have the eggplant caviar okay it takes us two days to make we fire roast eggplants and bell peppers uh we peel the skin well we you know we we sweat it peel it puree it the next day cook it for about six hours fresh herb spices really flavorful nice and smoky and we have our garlic sauce uh, it's basically emulsified four ingredients no starch no dairy the real way got you what we have is a bed of onions parsley and red onions with sumach and on top of that have fire roasted tomatoes mm -hmm. fire roasted jalapenos this is our beef shish kebab flat meat it's a two-day process i'll tell you that much got you so we marinate it overnight usually finished through throughout service it's our lamb chops as well which is another two-day process uh french cut right off the bone this is our chicken thigh shish kebab Get a nice little Maillard reaction on it. Dairy-based marinade, really flavorful stuff. It's also a two-day process. And it's our chicken lula. It's ground chicken. And we do it a little different than everybody else. We mix it with pork fat. Mm. Yeah, we love it with pork fat. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our falafels. It's vegan, not so much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, vegan, gluten-free, and super herbaceous and very flavorful. Finish off with our fresh basmati rice, twice-cooked Persian style, really flavorful as well fire on, on point all right let's do it let's do it bro whenever i eat food that's more like platter style grilled mm -hmm. meats i just kind of stuff everything together but i want you to walk us through just culturally appropriate okay, okay. of what's the proper way to set everything up there's no necessarily appropriate way okay how i like to do things is different from how somebody else would like to do things it really just boils down to how you're comfortable however you want to get some lavash typically i like to build it with multiple sauces right See, I was already doing this wrong. I was putting it on top. People judge too quick about how you, the preparation of it, you know? Yeah. It's really about how you want to eat it. Like right now, I'm in the mood to put some salad on top. Whoa, okay. You know, I'm gonna skip the yogurt and the hummus. I'm gonna put some sh uh, shirazi or I mean, a salad on top. What are you leaning towards? I want to try this, uh, this chicken, chicken to start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I would like to do a little chicken and like, I love lamb, but I'm gonna I'm hold on it. Like a chicken and beef combo? Whatever you want to do. Okay, you lead. All right. I'm actually gonna do this piece. Ah, I want this piece actually. Right, I'll take this one. Whole piece of chicken. Oh wait, wait, wait. And oh, I'm gonna do that with the hand. Some onions, parsley, sumac. You need okay. that. Okay. This is literally why mini kebab started. Like that mixture mm -hmm. with the ground chicken or beef. That's it. That's literally how it was served. Mm. Explosion of flavors, right? A variation of bro, <laughs> bro. I'm like, we'll crack open the falafel right now. Yeah, we'll see the difference between our falafel. Matter of fact, can I crack one open? Now? Yeah, please, please. I'm so, gonna put a little rice on this while we. Oh yeah. So the good thing, look, like good texture. Uh huh. A lot of people put starch and all that stuff in this, like not necessary. Like, but once you crack it open, right? Nice and green. Nice. And uh, yeah, you can see the herbs already. We soaked the chickpeas overnight, so when we do grind it. Everything kind of flows in, and we have a different thing that we've incorporated, which is we chop up fresh parsley, and, uh, cilantro, and throw it in there, yeah. and we mix it, and then we fry it off. So you get like this nice herbaceous pop when you're eating it. And garlic. I've never had a good falafel. Are you? No way. <laughs> never. So I'm ready to go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Let's break bread with that too. I like to eat it with whatever spread there is, because you know, it's not supposed to be eaten by itself. You okay. can, you know, when you eat anything, just like oysters, try it first. Mm-hmm. No, you got the flavor, but it's all carbs. It gets a little dry. Mm -hmm. You want to accompany it. What, what I like, I like hummus with it. Chickpeas with chickpeas. Oh yeah, this is gonna slap. Yeah, it's good. Mm. It's nice and flavorful. My grandma did this right. Mm. Papa. God damn. Mm. So I got right now is the beef, right? Mm -hmm. All right. That's a shot. The yogurt? Mm. Mm. Now you got me wanting garlic, bro. Dollops. Bro. It's like it's cloud like. It's nuts. Yeah, a lot of people like to put like, you know, soy sauce or teriyaki sauce. Because what it does, it tenderizes the meat. Mm -hmm. But instead, we just we pound it with a mallet. Simple ingredients, four or five ingredients. Just simple ingredients. That's the good thing about food. Like, it's not supposed to be overwhelming. It's supposed to be enough. It's not supposed to be intimidating. It's supposed to be honest, good food, you know? Mm-hmm. I have to make sure I get one of these lamb chops. Get that piece. I like it with the yogurt, actually. 
the I'll yogurt. Tell, yeah, yeah, because the yogurt is it's like quintessential with lamb. Okay. Yogurt and lamb, best friends. Now, am I being civil and cutting this off, or am I just using my? Am I just biting into it? You, like got, you gotta go. You gotta go old school, man. You just gotta, grab it and just buy it. You gotta go savage on it. All right. It's just the way to eat it. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, hey, <laughs> as long as I have your permission. Hey, it's the right way. <laughs> Super tender, bro. Can I try one? Yeah. Oh, Super God. tender. I mean, the wind is taking a little bit off the heat off of it, you know, but mm. super. Super tender. Interesting. It's a good flavor. Mmm. Dude, this is the best lamb chop I've ever had in my life. No. No, I'm, I'm being dead serious. <laughs> I say this I say this every episode, but I'm, I swear. The best lamb chop I've ever had. Oh, my God. Wait till we cook this over grapevines one day. We will. <laughs> the yogurt sauce on top of the lamb chop. Solid, right? Fresh cucumbers, dill, everything to complement. Mm. Well, you know what you should do? Please. Get some of that bottom bread. Okay. Nice and fatty dough. Okay. All the juices from the lamb just soak. And eat, obviously eat it with the lamb? Hell yeah. Okay. Wait, you like bro. onions? I do. Bro. So I'm gonna go like this. Yeah, dude, please. Make it my mouth water. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here for you. <laughs> All right, so oof, it's gonna be a little uh, dense. Just a heads up. Oh, that's fine, my man. That's how you look at that. No, oh. man, this is the this is the type of this is a, I could eat this every day. Yeah, hell yeah, too. I could definitely crush this every day. Bite that lamb chop. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're goaded, bro. <laughs> You're goaded. Okay, so I'm rebuilding this. Rebuilding it, love it. Bomb. Have a friendly day. Happy, happy days forward. Bro, oh, happy days forward, bro. Happy days forward. <laughs> <laughs> bro, this is. This is insane. Oh my God. Chef Armin, I have to say, and I know I've been saying this every single episode so far, man, there is some really good food in Los Angeles. And this is some of the best that I've ever had. I said that last week when I did, uh, I said that last week when I did Doubting Thomas for different reasons. Nice. But I have to say, I can't see a place doing Armenian food. I can't see anybody beating what I had to do. Like, and it makes sense, you know, because when I came here, the line's out the door, your mom's in there whipping up, your dad's in there. I can, I get why this place is a success. And I also taste why this place is a success. Thank you. You know, so thank you so much for this. What a beautiful experience. I just love everything about this, man. Thank you. You're a special person. I really appreciate you. So are you, man. It's all reciprocated. And obviously you're, you're doing us a big favor by, you know, bringing our food to a lot of people that haven't been able to consume it quite yet. So uh, we're equally thankful. Yeah. Thank you, brother. So just my yeah, breaking sure. bread today. I love yeah, it. I love it. Man. <laughs> thank you, bro. Now I know that if I want lamb chops, I don't have to think about going to a steakhouse. No, I'm definitely come, not. I can. I know. I can come to. I can come to mini kebab. You know. So this is. This Shoot. it's just it's just that it's satiating. Nice. The whole palate for me right now. Yes. Incredible, bro. We should do a barbecue one day. Oh my god. Whole block party at mini kebab. Drink some wine. Some alcohol, smoke stogies. Be careful what you say, because the comments section will run deep, so I'm about it. If you guys would like to see a mini kebab barbecue here in Glendale going down the block, leave us a comment in the section. Mini kebab block party. We'll throw a sick party.